Hello there and welcome to another episode of <laughs> News from the Gelding. Okay, hello, my name is John Chapman. I'm a self-published fantasy author and occasional artist. And back there I've got me old mate Sir Percival. Hello! Indeed. Okay, so that fairly doom-laden intro was of course Metallica's Sad But True. Quite a fitting statement to begin this video because we are dealing with a fairly bleak situation in regards to whether you can succeed at self-publishing or not. Now this is not to discourage you at all if you are yet to begin the adventure of self-publishing or indeed are in the same situation as I am. There's always hope but the biggest mistake to make is to think that success is guaranteed or even attainable. It's fairly unlikely that any of us will make a success of this venture, but if you don't try, you never get any bloody wear, do you? So you've got to give it a go. I disagree. I did rather well with my book, if you recall. Yes, I know you've had some success, Sir Percival, with your book, uh, Fun With Wands, but when you're dealing with a, a fairly niche um, subgenre like Fun With Wands, you, you may have a more limited audience, but people are more likely to search for you. But when you're in the fantasy genre, or well, like I'm in the epic stroke dark fantasy, you're dealing with vast numbers. And the chances that you'll be found by chance are very, very slim indeed. When I began, I started out with the mentality of build it and they will come. If you create something that's absolutely extraordinarily good, people will find it, they'll like it and pass it on and all of that. But that isn't going to happen, damn it. Consider this uh, thought experiment I came up with the other day. <laughs> Imagine if Lord of the Rings had never been written. Of course, there, there's a paradox there because none of modern fantasy would probably exist. But say it hadn't been written and you've just written Lord of the Rings in its entirety and you're self-publishing the damn thing. As amazing as that sequence of books is, it's bloody impossible to try and get people to read it. There's so much contingent on your success. Um, but anyway, I'll talk about that a bit later. First of all, let's get some stark reality checks going on here. So according to Google, the number of books available in the world or online or via online um, means is 129,864,880. So that's a vast ocean of books that you're throwing your little pebble into the sea of doom. Um, if we consider that just in 2019 alone, over 4 million books were published in the US alone. Now that includes self-published books, which accounts for almost, well, I don't know, a vast proportion of those numbers. Um, we are dealing with a bleak situation indeed. Now, of course, that doesn't mean there's 4 million fantasy books there in that one year that's been released. Rather, it's still a very large number. So if you just type in fantasy in Amazon and have a little search, it'll come up with 60,000 uh, results. But that's that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's far more there. Um, I mean, take my books alone. If you look at the, the current ranking of them, we're, I'm down in the millions. So there's there's millions of the damn things. So, yes, we are. We've got our work cut out for us. Um, so, right. What I'm going to do is start by taking my own books as an example of how I failed. <laughs> so the first one, James of Galandar, um, I released last year, no, what, a year before, 2019 in the summer. Um, it took me five years to write the bastard thing. I'm not kidding, it took me five years. So that's all the planning, the world building, everything. It was the first work of fiction that I'd, a big work of fiction that I'd um, in, uh, attempted. And so I was kind of learning as I went. So um, it's may, maybe an unfair comparison, but five years, at least, I would say a thousand hours at least I spent doing that. Because I did it, I did it almost every day 
during the, at least four of those years. Um, it sounds insane, but that's that's the way it is. I sometimes only spent half an hour uh, on a given day, but usually over an hour at least. So how did that first um, release go? Well, in the opening week, I sold 30 copies, groundbreaking numbers. But I thought, OK, that's OK. It's a slow start, but it'll build. It'll build during the year. So a year passed and I sold zero copies. <laughs> so the whole year, nothing. Um, so I f but see, during that year, I didn't do a great deal other than my YouTube uh, channel. Uh, to promote the book, although I did have Instagram and some dalliances with uh, Facebook. I didn't really put much effort into it. So I thought, right, we need to drum up a bit more, a uh, few more numbers, need some more eyeballs on the book at the very least. So then I I, I tried to hit huge, um, Instagram a bit more. Uh, I paid for sponsored ads. So I wasn't able to do that during the year before because I was totally broke. Um, I joined a writing group online, some dalliances with Reddit um, and Facebook, um, some groups on Facebook. Um, and yes, I had a little bit more uh, coming in, uh, 20 more copies. But then, of course, as soon as I stopped uh, feeding that machine, it plateaued again. Nothing. Well, plateaued. It just went straight down. So in the the up to date, the life of my first book, James of Gallandar, has sold 52 copies and uh, has made me £83.50. Now, if we break divide that by a thousand hours, at least a thousand, we're talking eight pence an hour I've made on those uh, on writing that first book. Very bleak indeed. So at the same time, I, I did hope that my YouTube channel would would help a bit with the promotion. Um, so uh, because I've done the artwork for the books as well, I've, I've managed to do a couple of videos just about, you know, time lapse of doing the front cover. And I thought that at least would give me um, some exposure. Uh, someone at least would see it and be intrigued enough to want to buy it. But I never correlated any sales at all with my YouTube channel. So that's been an, an utter failure, really. Um, but to be honest, I never intended the, the channel to, to be promotion, but I thought it would be a nice side uh, consequence of, of doing it. But no, no, nothing at all. OK, so right. The next thing I did was I thought, right, we need to do something about this. If I'm going to be releasing the sequel to this book and no one's read the first one, what's the point of promoting the sequel? So I gave the first book away for free, of course. So during the week, um, uh, I did a promotion thing and, and it was free for a week. So let's um, have a little look see of the numbers. Uh, OK, just make sure there's nothing dodgy on my links. What the hell is going on here? So, Percival, have you been on my computer again? Uh, no. Dirty ones, juicy ones, big ones, giant ones, very big ones. You are absolutely filthy. Anyway, let's let's move on, move on. Right, let's have a look here. First one. We've got, I gave away 23 uh, copies on the first day. Now, this first day, I didn't promote it at all. At all. I, I didn't have time. I just I set it up because I was already I was trying to finalise the, the release of the second book. 23 copies first day. Second day went up to 79. So now I was making a bit more of an effort. I was promoting it on social media across different platforms, uh, on Reddit, various things, um, Facebook uh, groups and all that. Um, so that's nice. Next day went up again to 70, 94. Um, and then I was still trying, but the numbers dropped off considerably. So 36 and down to 12 on the last day. So, right, what the hell went wrong? Um, I, I was hoping to shift far more free books, but it just shows that even giving away a book for free isn't enough. I mean, you can't even give books away, you know, for free. So it's quite depressing. But at least now with the combined sales and the free books, I had at least... 300 people that had a copy doesn't 
mean of course that they read the damn thing but at least they've got it and there's the potential then for sales of the second book okay so second book comes along I was aiming for a release date of the 18th of December it's not the ideal time to uh, release a book um, the fourth quarter of the year um, it's just a free-for-all um, everyone all the publishers are releasing books in the autumn uh, in anticipation of Christmas and Christmas itself that time is just nuts but at the same time I thought if I don't set a date it's just going to keep dragging on and on so it's around took me around two years to write this one um, it was easier I was, I, was, I was better at writing at this point uh, found it easier uh, and all the world building I'd already done so I was building on the story so this time it took me what three no how many 400 hours something like that over the two years yeah 400 hours um and right drop the damn thing this time i was a bit more prepared i across social media some groups fantasy uh, groups said it's coming out um and waited with bated breath for the release the numbers came in they weren't good okay so up to date are the first first weekend um, I sold 11 copies and four more copies of the first book uh, but that's it so since then since 18th uh, the weekend of the 18th of December I haven't sold a single copy of the second book so again if we take that um, money per hour situation um, so yeah 400 hours I made two I, I made 20 quid on those book sales so yeah we're dealing with five pence an hour for those for those um, for the second book so yeah not good at all so I'm just gonna take this off Ugh. crikey it's quite hot uh, might I suggest you take all of your clothes off I'm not taking all my clothes off so best of all for God's sake <clears throat> okay right so let's move on a little bit more so my work is part of a series or a trilogy i envisage writing three books so a lot a lot of fantasy authors um crime authors lo lots of people do this they write a series of books if you develop a fan base then you've got constant sales throughout the life of your series hopefully if you keep it good um i did it because the first the book I wanted to write was going to be too long so I thought I'll split it into three I mean it took me five years to do the first one so I thought it's gonna be like a decade before the books even out so I thought right I'll split it into three and just go from there um, hopefully that works out but it didn't because because of the poor sales um, even giving it away for free you know who's going to buy a book after you promoted the book if they haven't read the first book i mean the idea ideally then they go back and buy the first book and read that first but you you take all this effort to promote a book and a lot of people are put off by the fact that they need to read another book first so the interest in that that book that you're working so hard to promote goes out the window they the best scenario is that they go back and read the first one so you may as well really just promote the first one but after a while people are just going to get sick of you trying to talk about the first book all the time I mean I haven't done it too much I don't think especially on here because I I feel embarrassed about always yeah check my book out again I mean it's 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 quite miserable really and the same with social media I mean I've, I've stopped putting that on anywhere now because I mean I'm sick of seeing it they must be too um right okay so there we are Let's make some conclusions here. These are based on my own experience. So um, the first thing of note is people will always encourage self-publishing because it's free. You know, the whole process is free. Write the book, design a cover, get some someone to do it for you, stick it on. The whole thing's free. It is, of course it is. Ebooks free. Even if you do uh, print on demand, it's all free. You're not paying a penny. But to succeed, you need money. There's no question. I, I'm lucky enough that I'm able to, I was able to design my own cover art, 
but it doesn't mean to say it's good enough. I mean, I've done it because it saved me lots of money, but ideally you pay a professional artist to do it for you. That costs a lot of money. I mean, we're talking, I would say at least, you're getting up to around a thousand pound for a decent, a really good cover. Um, and the cover will sell the book. I mean, there's no two ways about it. And there are trends in, in, in cover design, especially in fantasy. I mean, something becomes successful, people start mimicking the, de the design. And, and I don't like that idea personally, but I've, it works, you know, it sells books. Um, you've also got the benefit that the artists themselves will promote, inadvertently be promoting your work because they're always promoting their, their artwork. Um, and alongside that, it means that your book is being promoted at the same time. Someone else working for you um, after the book, you know, after the artwork has been done. They're promoting themselves, they're promoting you. Also, you need to advertise. There's no two ways about it. Um, my experience of uh, paying for sponsored promotion through Amazon is not good. I mean, I had some sales. I think maybe two two books were sold through the sponsored ads. Um, so I made, I don't know, £10? No, it wasn't that. It wasn't as much as that. I don't know. Maybe £10, so maybe a few books. But I spent getting towards £100 doing it. So that was totally pointless. Now, the failure of, of the sponsored thing, it's quite a tricky thing, getting to grips with the keywords and... Um, envisaging what people will be looking for and whether they'll like your book in turn. The mistake I made was that I used, I had various different campaigns. You can set up separate campaigns and, and the most successful one, the one that was generating the most clicks was um, set on books that are similar to mine. So people would be looking for say Brandon Sanderson or something like that. And my book would appear as a little thumbnail below amongst a deluge of others. And so one thing that it told me was that at least my cover art was attractive enough for the person to click on it because I had lot I had lots of clicks so which generated all this money I had to pay. What wasn't happen happening was that the it wasn't completing so they weren't they would click on it maybe read the blurb and then they weren't interested. Now I'm thinking that that was probably because what Amazon thought my book was similar to, it wasn't. And I've no idea how you get it to, you know, recommend books off the back of something that is more similar. But, um, you know, say so people would be looking for something, they'd find mine, and it was nothing like the thing that they were searching before. That's the problem. So I've stopped the sponsored ads. And I think from now on, I may try tailored advertising on other platforms or wherever um, so that I can control a bit more who's viewing it. But anyway, that requires money. Um, yeah, so money, money, money. If you've got a good deal of money to throw at it, it's worth a gamble, I would say. I mean, I've followed other self-published authors that have had good success and they've put a lot of money into it um, but it is a gamble and you risk losing it all I mean the chances are you will lose it but anyway um, so yeah so another way you can get um, interest in what you're doing um, it's something that I failed at miserably but I think I know why I failed so if we take Instagram as an, as a, as a, an example um, if you look at my Instagram, it's a absolute mess. So it kind of um, it shows in a in a almost like geological sense um, a, a piece of rock strata how I'm thinking about how I can make Instagram work for me. So let's have a look. So at the very beginning, I had these very tentative. Uh, steps at the beginning where I'm showing this is a picture showing how many um, how the edits going I've got bits of the map how I made the map um, my brother's stag do where we all dressed up as uh, 
um, D and D characters. Um, and then yeah, some more details from my map, which I was quite proud of at the time. And then I started thinking, right, let's get some fantasy art on and talk about it, you know, dissect it and how it relates to my understanding of fantasy in general. Um, I did that for a while. Then I started putting up some of my own paintings, film, there's Willow, um, drawings again, and then places that I've been to that have fantasy feelings about them. Then I started promoting my YouTube uh, channel, which didn't really work. Then quotes, um, quotes from my book. That that was quite a nice thing. I got some good feedback from those. Then lino cut that I was doing, more promotion. Now I'm just focusing on promoting the, <clears throat> oh, this is the painting and family things, you know, life. Uh, but it's a, an absolute hodgepodge of things um, and at, at this point here it's just little these are video clips from my YouTube but on the on Instagram it looks rubbish you know it's Instagram is very image led um, and it's you need to focus on images again quotes la 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 and me at Christmas expelling smoke from my nostrils okay so what you what I've seen that works is people that use fantasy art. So it's all about fantasy art. That's the focus. Whether you're a writer or you're preparing to re release something, art is the thing that sells. Now there's, there's people that I've seen doing this where they don't even me mention the artist at all, which is unbelievable. I can't believe that they've done that. They don't own the copyright or the, they don't have permission to put these images on, but they put them on. And then people follow them because they think that they're the artist. Um, it's ridiculous. But but the people that have been a bit more successful that I've seen doing it, they, they'll they pick a picture, a fantasy, piece of fantasy art, and they relate it to their writing. Or they'll write a little piece, uh, a piece of fiction based on the image, or whatever. But that seems to work. Um, I've seen people that have been very successful getting followers doing that. The other option, of course, is to be quite good at uh, promoting yourself uh, in your personality. I've seen people that have quite good followings that are doing that um, and talking about writing at the same time. But the problem is, um, especially if you go down the writing route, talking about writing and all that, which I've dallied with on here, the problem with that is that you mostly attract other writers, which is nice. I mean, it's good to build a community of um, like minded people, um, but they're not going to buy your book. <laughs> um, what you really want is to attract readers who aren't necessarily interested in an author and unless until they become a fan of, you know, if, if they're a fan of you, they may want to know about your life and everything else with it, what you think. But until that point, you need to attract readers. So another option then is to to spend time reviewing, reviewing books um, and ideally ones that sit within your genre. Again, I like reviewing books, but I, I, I like to review books that I'm reading. I read across all genres. I don't just read fantasy. It's just it'd be boring to me to just read fantasy. So I can't focus on just doing books but um, fantasy books but you can so um, consider that okay and, and the final note really is just don't give up um, I, I feel I mean I've been failing ever since I released the first book um, and it does feel um, it's hard it brings you down you can't escape that um, so but you have to still love what you're doing. And I love writing and I love working on these books. Um, and that is enough for me. It's enough to sustain me. Um, but if, if, if they were selling well, then I would have, you know, I'd have far more motivation for, for getting them out quicker than two years. Um, so the next one I'm hoping is only going to take me a year. Um, but it's, yeah, it can be demoralizing, but so my advice would be don't, of course, begin writing your first book if you haven't done it before, but prepare to fail. And at the same time, 
um, just love what you're doing. It's about the love of the process. If you don't love it, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily, <laughs> I wouldn't entertain doing it. It's not, it's, you're not guaranteed success by a long way. I mean, the market is completely oversaturated as we established at the beginning. Um, so the chances of success are slim to none. So it's like having a lottery ticket, really. Um, you write your book, publish it, do everything to the best of your ability, and then you, you've still got to work for it, but it's like a lottery ticket. Um, and you can increase the odds of it winning, but it's still, you know, stacked against you, really. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll leave it there. It's fairly awful again, I'm sorry. Um, Aren't you forgetting something? Yes, okay, right. Um, oh, goody. So Percival wants to show you his uh, book, the front cover of his book. I warn you, it's mildly pornographic. So um, we'll leave it to the end and so you can switch off. But um, but anyway, I'm going to say goodbye now. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, and yes, if you like what you've seen, I doubt you've made it this far. But if you have, perhaps subscribe um, and see what, el what else I come up with. <laughs> okay, cheerio everyone. Cheerio. Well, get it out then, man. Okay. Get it out. I'll bring it up, yeah, okay. Mmm, isn't it a beauty? <sighs> Absolute filth. <laughs> Not a bad book, though. Better believe it.